the youth program is, is actually doing a lot for the community. We're offering a lot of opportunities to, to stay out of trouble, to, to get good grades in school. Just, just think big, don't think little. Whatever they try to do, they can do, even something they think they can't do at all. The first couple days, they just kind of get into the, the sensory experience of what it is to be at the preschool, what it is to be in this space. I'm really scared of fire, so it, it was scary at first, but then it got a lot easier and, and I got more comfortable. At first, you'd be really kind of scared because you'd be doing something new that you've never done before, and you'd be afraid that you'd mess up, but once you get the hang of it, it's really fun. This facility gives you a chance to really explore beyond what a lot of people find are comfortable boundaries. When you're torch cutting, they said it's like really hot and I was afraid I'd get burned. I didn't go. The first moment they walk through the door, a lot of them get are a little bit frightened of the sparks and the fire. But the moment they, you know, put that torch or something in their hand and are actually able to control that environment, it's a totally different world. And, and then by the end, they're walking into the torch cutting area, lighting up the torch, getting down into the um, sparks and just cutting the metal without any real uh, hesitation. They get to do a lot of things that most kids would never have an opportunity to do, which is, you know, learning how to, to use a lot of the equipment that most adults never have an opportunity to do. So the fact that a 10-year-old can learn how to, you know, do wood carving or make, you know, stuff with glass using an open flame, I mean, that's pretty, pretty special, you know. We're offering them, you know, welding skills, um, jewelry, glass blowing, bike mechanic skills, leadership skills. There's very few places where students, can, young students, can learn the things that are taught at the Crucible unless you pay for a private instruction. So the, the opportunity to do this in a safe way um, and a very closely watched, instructed way is really a rare experience. The field trip program is really incredible. And the field trips normally last an hour, and we have three to five demonstrations. It serves as an entrance point and outreach into other programs. So what I do first to make sure that I'm safe, because safety always comes first, is I'm going to have everybody here put on one of a pair of these dark glasses. These glasses will shade your eyes, and they're going to protect your eyes from what's called a UV ray. It's just like the rays coming from the sun. Yeah, you guys look pretty cool. Well, let me show you what it does. Um, you can use art as an entry point. This green hose has our oxygen and the red hose has our fuel. And then transfer that to math. Transfer that to science, some of the classes that they may not think that they enjoy. We have workshops which um, are tailored to schools and community-based organizations need. And we also offer workshops during the school year. And we're here for a special welding um, workshop. The eighth graders at the end of the year have three weeks and they get to choose what they want to do. They love the idea of working with fire and they see the sparks and it always gets them very excited about coming back. This is the, this is the dog, his name is Truffle. So me and my friend, we heated this end up and we hand it ourselves. I'd like to continue doing the stuff we're doing, um, cutting and welding. I did have to give him some plastic surgery, but in the end, I, I gave him a nice little tail and, um, and a collar. Um, a lot of this is just, uh, just flat plates. Um, his entire body is just uh, one plate that I cut out and welded together. Yeah, it was really fun. I had a great time. But I think I'd love to do some more welding and cutting metal because I want to get more, um, just, well, just better at this because I think it's a really, really awesome thing to do, to be able to do. We've done some really incredible um, workshops. They're really extraordinary and they really allow for this concentrated 
time for young people to either create individual or group projects. The bike program was started about four years ago, and we started with bike fix-a-thons where we would roll up our roll-up door and we would fix our neighbor's bikes. And it turned into a really popular community initiative, and we realized it was a great way in which to outreach to our greater community because West Oakland tends to use bikes a lot, and so it was a way that we can connect with them and, and just be good neighbors. What we found is it also served as an excellent way in which to get folks into the building and then we can give them tours and explore and explain the, the sort of resources we have. It's turned into a huge, huge program and a, a really big part of our community program. And so we now offer bike fix a 12 times a year. When we first started, we offered it four times a year. We also offer um, earn a bike programs where young people come in and then they take a bike out of these bikes that have been donated. They fix up the bike and then they earn that bike and they learn bike mechanics and then we ask them to come and help out at our bike fix a and to provide community service. And so it's been a really meaningful way in which we work with young folks to teach them bike mechanics and at the same time help them serve their own communities. And so it's, it's created a nice synergy between giving and receiving. And I think our young folks really feel proud that they're able to, to fix a flat or to, um, to serve their own community. And so that's been a great program. The Herb is our educational resource vehicle and it's a restored 1960s fire truck that um, serves as our outreach vehicle. Um, it's, it's pretty extraordinary to, to drive down the streets of Oakland in our Herb. It also has on board the ability to do blacksmithing, torch cutting, welding, foundry, and grinding. And it, it just serves as an excellent outreach vehicle for young folks and the greater community to get a sense of who we are and what we do and to demystify some of some of these fine industrial arts. And we often use it for schools as well as um, community um, events and, and greater outreach um, events. It's definitely a showstopper and so um, we try to be aware of letting our our audience members know when the cannon goes off because it just makes this really loud, booming sound. A lot of schools do not have classes anymore in shop, woodworking, none of that. I see us really as a partner with educational systems and the fact that, you know, there's the book learning and then there's the learning that you do with your hands. I see that all art programs at all schools at all levels are getting cut. It's really good to give the kids the opportunity to learn the stuff that they probably would never have the opportunity to learn and it gives them a whole new creative output. I think it's important for me just having grown up here and knowing that the lack of uh, arts education in our schools and all, there's not really a whole lot of outlets for kids and places for them to go and, and spend some time. Students need to have exposure to that because it's a, those are skills that are invaluable. What I've always loved about the Chris Bolton is a commitment to community as part of who we are. We're arts, industry, and community. And it's really beneficial to, to the kids and also to a lot of the, um, the hardworking parents. I think there was a solid commitment on the part of the Cree School to make sure that this program existed and was a resource for the greater community. And so by serving our young, young folks, I think that was a way in which we were all able to create a common dialogue. And I think that's a commonality we all share, is that we all want our young people to grow up in these neighborhoods and to be safe and to be engaged and to learn and to grow.